had hit after hit, season after season. Now beating out a time step in this broken down saloon. Take ten, sweetheart. Take ten? I've been taking ten ever since I've known you, watching you fight your way to the bottom. I don't fight, baby. I'm a lover. Don't change the subject. You fought with Ziegfeld, Harris, Hammerstein, Eberhardt, always battling. But you know who you're really fighting? Yourself. Where do we go from here? We land right on our feet, and when we do... That tune went off my hit parade long ago. Sorry, but here goes the bride. Eve, Eve. You haven't heard the whole story. Heard it? I could put it to music. Meet me at the city hall. This is it. We'll have a honeymoon in Bermuda. Had to postpone it. Something happened to the money. Something always happened to the money. Answer it. Probably your bookie with another sure thing. Hello. Big old boy, how are you, fellas? You know, I've been combing the town for you. Where you been? How do you feel? Since when did you start being interested in the state of my health? Oh, now, Bix, you know I've always been interested in how you're doing. Listen, I've got a proposition for you. Go blow your brains out, you thief! Eberhardt. Harry Eberhardt? Yes, offered me a job. You fool. The only producer in town will give you a job and you insult him? I wouldn't work for that chiseler if you put a gun in my back. Well, that does it. Pick up the phone when you roll out of bed around 2 tomorrow afternoon. Call my two-room cross-ventilated basement. Ask for Eve. She won't live there anymore. Oh, no. Sit down, sit down, sweetheart. You're overheated. Fix, I'm leaving. Yeah, sure, sure. I've been offered a job to do a single and help stage the dances at a hotel in Las Vegas. You, you, you can't do that. You're my, you're my feet, you're my memory. I, I couldn't work without you. You better start getting used to it. All right, Eve. Eve, sell me. Word of honor, word of honor, no more horses. Word of honor? Yeah. You don't know what it means. Sorry, Bix, I've got a pack. Well, I'll be up your place as soon as I finish here. It won't do any good. Save yourself the bus fare. You might need it. I forget something? What a dirty stinker. And you're going right back in that office and explain to them how you got my laundry by mistake in Dusseldorf and forgot to give it back to me. Well, that's such a dull story. Who would care? You know what you made them think? I don't quite understand. Oh, no. You mean you and me? Well, I'd be glad to explain to them the very idea of any connection oh, no, is revolting. You don't. No, you don't. Never mind. Just but I'd be delighted. I'd explain to them. I think you're repulsive. Shh. I said never mind. Just forget it. Go away. You've had your joke. Now beat it. Sorry, I can't oblige. I'm here on official business. No, don't tell me. Another mission? Yes, but don't get your hopes up. You're not going with me. Thank heavens. Who's your victim this time? My interpreter and aide is a Lieutenant Eloise Billings, whom I'm reliably informed is intelligent. Yes. Pretty. Yes. And as you Americans say, stacked. That she is. You haven't met her. No, but that happy event's going to take place in Major Prendergast's office in exactly uh, 30 seconds. Goodbye again to you, Lieutenant Gates. Where are you going? Major Prendergast's office. There's nothing for you to do in there. Oh, isn't there? Now, wait a minute. I'm in a hurry. I do think I've got to let you... Hello, uh, Eloise. Hi, honey. May I present Captain Rochard, Lieutenant Billings. You two are going to work together. Enchanted, Lieutenant Billings. How do you do, Captain? I was I just... I believe we have a mutual friend, Alex Brizak. Oh, nice. Why, sure, I remember him. Lieutenant, due to the fact that I was on previous missions with Captain Rochard, uh, he just returned some of my things. Perhaps I'd be of some help to you. Oh, thank you. I can explain things to Lieutenant Billings. Don't you have somewhere to go? Oh, no, I'm free until 2.30. Well, now, about this here mission... Well, it's a perfectly simple matter. It's an overnight job. We have to go to Bad Nauheim, a pleasant little village. Oh, and... I will be till you get there. Well, I can explain the whole thing better to you when we're alone. Better wear sidearms, Lieutenant. He uses maps instead of etchings. Captain Rochard, I've so looked forward to going to bed, no one. Billings, the French army shoe is built on slightly different lines. 
Ooh. Hold the foot, would you, Junior? Yes, yes, yes. As you can see, by Captain Rochard's foot and my thigh. For goodness sake! That was purely accidental. The mark under my chin... May I have my foot? Uh -huh. Thank you. The mark under my chin was an accident. My fault entirely. I tripped while he was chasing me. He was you chasing me? Oh, shut up. There, you see? Something I would never have mentioned if he hadn't shown it. His temper. But the poor man's probably not to blame. More like a form of epilepsy. Oh. Will you shut up? I tell you this, Billings, Will because you... Will you shh, shh? Henry, I'm talking. Yes, you are. I tell you this, Billings, because we're members of the same army and the same sex. But I'm I think it only fair to warn you that Jack the Ripper's up that alley before you head into it. Now, in case anything happens, would you like to give me your mother's name and address? But, honey, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh? I'm not going on this here mission. Oh, you're not. I'm going to Frankfurt with Colonel Bliven on that DP but, job, but, but you're well, going with tell him. Me, tell me, who is Jack the... Oh. Honey, maybe you better leave me your mother's little old name and address. Oh, hello, Captain Rochard. Good morning, Major. I was just going to send for you, Gates. Come in, please. You too, Captain. Operator, I want to speak to the Hotel Ritz. Please hurry, this is an emergency. Hello, Ritz. I want to speak to Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Frank Flanagan. Sorry, but he left express orders not to be disturbed. But I... Sorry, madam, absolutely not. Monsieur Flanagan has retired for the night. Look, you better put this call through or Mr. Flanagan will retire permanently. Hello? 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 What time is it now? 9.20. I must say you're acting very strange tonight. Well, how would you act if you knew that somebody was being shot? I don't know. I would call the police. Who is being shot? Do you have another telephone coin? Marianne, I have a right to know what's going on. Not just because I tell you the time or pay for your telephone calls, but because you know how I feel about you. Police? I want the commissaire the police, please. Marianne, who's being shot? Where? By whom? And what's it got to do with you? Commissaire the police? I wish to report a crime. You don't trust anybody, do you? Grady told me Blackford didn't go anywhere without you. But he didn't tell me you went anywhere without Blackford. Grady doesn't know as much as he thinks. I had a talk with Martin last night. The office idea is okay. He's agreed to come in. Is there any question about it? Sure, a big question. Martin has an important position with a very old and reliable firm. He'd be giving up quite a lot to come in with you. Really? Martin Blackford, 34 years old. Started work with Tuttle and Wagner at $40 a week. After 12 years, raised himself $20. Lives with his mother in a cheap suburb, drives a broken down jalopy, and until hired by Grady, never owned more than two suits of clothes at one time. Well, there are other things. The terms. And there's a little matter of protection. Protection? From whom? Why, well, from whoever you need protection from. Or is running a bookie joint legal these days. My dear Miss Whitehead, operating a wire service does involve a certain amount of cooperation from the authorities and an even greater amount from the public. But I never initiate a project until I'm assured of that cooperation. As for the terms, I think Mr. Blackford can safely leave those to me. Well, I didn't mean you were going to give him a fast shuffle. It's just that, well, he hasn't had much experience at this kind of thing. You seem a little new at it yourself. Here, sit down. What did you really come to see me about? Well, Excuse I... Excuse me. What kind of perfume are you using? Temptation. Yes, I suppose it is in some quarters. Now, you were about to say? I was about to say it was a pleasure being associated with a gentleman, but I was wrong on both counts. What do I have to do to get out of here? You have to get permission from me. You enjoy making a person look like two cents, don't you? 
Well, get this straight. I don't like being made to look like two cents. Especially by somebody who was small change himself not so long ago. What do you mean by that? I mean Joe Cavaney, who changed his name to George Kesselman. You and your Etruscan flower pots. You and your sensitive nose. Since when did Joe Cavaney know anything about perfume? Since you were a loud-mouthed hoodlum hijacking beer trucks in Jersey, running rum from Cuba, plugging guys for a $10 bill? I can find out things, too. Waste any time, did you? I don't have any time to waste. I made the mistake last night. I should have invited you into the library. I admire a woman with brains, but a woman with brains and spirit excites me. A woman like that reminds me of Joe Cavaney. That our friend the burglar may turn out to be none other than the Yorkshire Strangler. And that's the case, not one of us is safe in our beds as long as we... Look out, Pennington! Don't point that thing at me, what the deuce are you doing? It's your own fault, Doctor. My fault that you're, you're fitting about with a, with a death-dealing weapon? Because all you do is talk, talk, talk about the burglar. You've got half the women in this town scared of their own shadows. I, I... Oh, it's ridiculous, of course. But since she spoke to you this afternoon, Mrs. Latham insisted that I carry this. Sorry if I frightened you, Doctor. I wanted you to see firsthand just what an effect you're having. Oh, dear fellow, I had no intention of upsetting anybody. I just... Yes? Oh, uh, Dr. Tuttle. What is it? Is that enough? You're wanted upstairs. It's Sally. What's the matter with Sally? Has she had a relapse? They want a doctor, not a lawyer. You'll find her in her room. Nice, quiet little dinner party I'm having, I must say. <laughs> What's wrong with Sally? B says she fainted a while ago. She looks perfectly healthy to me. I wouldn't call that any guarantee. Still in love with Sally, aren't you, Charles? Perhaps. Why don't you do something about it? Because it's a bad business to come between husband and wife. You might remember that too, my dear. <laughs> Sally's in love with Jeffrey. Leave it that way. You know I hate to leave things the way I find them. How would you know? You've never tried. Stop being smug. The important thing is to be happy. At whose expense, darling? Not at yours, my sweet. Matter of fact, I ought to be quite useful to you. How would you like to eat your slightly frosted cake and still have it, too? I don't understand you. You will, Charles. Cecily, allow me to inform you, you're the most exasperating well, woman I... It seems the police are absolutely helpless. Now, if I had charge of the case, I'd set a trap for the burglar. Oh, Sally. What? Oh, she's all right, just a slight attack of nerves, that's all. Minor, very minor. Well, I'm going upstairs to see her. There's <laughs> no need to do that, will you, fellow? She'll be down directly. Oh, extraordinary fellow. Reminds me of a patient I had in 1920, was it? 1919. I remember one day I was going down the... Oh, it doesn't matter very much. I think I'll just have a, a spot of whiskey. The host in London and the hostess ill. Did she say when Geoffrey might be back? No. But I've an idea we shall dine without him. Pennington, Tuttle, Sally, you and I. <laughs> Sounds like a jolly evening, doesn't it? 